Good morning chemistry students. Here um, is a YouTube video of myself going over the ChemQuest 39 intro to moles. I do expect this to be a longer video as there's quite a bit of information here. Remember that I am quite particular about how you show your work. So um, to a certain extent you're going to be able to get away with it a little bit because you're only going to show me your homework assignments and on a test or quiz or whatever, I'm not going to be able to take points away from you, but know that I expect you to show your work the way I'm going to show it on this paper and the way we do it throughout chapter seven. So if we look at the information, thinking in quantities, a mole is simply a quantity of atoms, just like a dozen is a quantity of eggs. If you have two dozen eggs, we know you have 24 eggs. Similarly, chemists can speak of having two moles of carbon atoms or four moles of water molecules. Just like the number 12 goes with dozen, there is a number that goes with a mole also, but we will worry about that later. Below are two pictures of containers that contain atoms of neon gas. There are a lot of atoms of neon in each container. So we see this first picture here that I have for you. This container represents 1.00 mole of neon gas. The gas has a mass of about 20 grams. This container represents 0 0.50 moles of neon gas. The gas has a mass of about 10 grams. So I wanna kinda of look at our number of dots here. So here we have nine, not nine, six dots that represents one mole. And has a mass of about 20 grams. Here we have three dots. It represents half a mole. and has a mass of about 10 grams. So question number one, in the following container, put the correct number of atoms, black dots, to represent 2.00 moles of neon gas. So if one mole was six dots, how many dots am I gonna have to have to have two moles? twice as many. So I'm going to put 12 dots in here. And again, it doesn't matter where you put them, but you should have 12 dots. Okay, which represents two moles of Dion. So question number two, what is the mass of the gas in the container in question one? Well, if one mole had a gas, uh, a mass of 20 grams, if I have twice as many moles, I'm gonna have twice as much mass. So the mass here is going to be, okay, 40 grams because one mole equals 20 grams, therefore two moles is going to equal 40 grams. Question number three. Draw black dots to represent neon atoms and place 30 grams worth of neon in the following container. So this time I want to get 30 grams well, 30 grams is halfway between the 40 grams for number two and the 20 grams from our example. So if I need six dots to have 20 grams and I need 12 dots to be 40 grams, hopefully you're able to figure out that I'm going to need nine dots here because that's halfway in between. Now, question four, the container in question three contains how many moles of neon atoms? Again, 12 dots was two moles, six dots was one mole, 
So nine dots is halfway in between, so nine dots must be 1.5 moles of neon atoms. Number five. Each black dot in the above example stands for about that huge number of atoms. Approximately how many atoms are in a mole? So we know that six dots equals one mole. So we're going to take six times this number and we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven sets of zeros. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. So six times that number means I have, and then all of those zeros. Three, four, five, six, seven, okay? So here is some information that we need. Okay, so again, we have information, atomic mass using atomic mass units, AMUs, and grams, G. One atomic mass unit is equal to 1.6611 times 10 to the negative 24th grams. So remember from back, we talked about this a little bit that very first week of the trimester when we were in class. We have a conversion factor. We want to write a conversion factor for this. And a conversion factor is a ratio of equivalent or equal measurements. Um, I'm just going to use the word amounts here. So this is telling me that 1 AMU equals 1.6611 times 10 to the negative 24th grams. So I can write this as a conversion factor, making it look like a ratio, right, which means it's going to look like a fraction. So I can put 1 AMU on the top and 1.6611 times 10 to the negative 24th grams. Or, really, the power of these conversion factors is that I can put my units wherever I need them to be. So it's just as correct to write this as 1.6611 times 10 to the negative 24 grams over 1 AMU. So either way will work for this. So we're going to use that to answer questions 6, 7, 8, and 9. Okay? These conversion factors here are some of what we're going to use to answer questions 6, 7, 8, and 9. Question number 6. According to the periodic table, a single atom has a mass of 12.011 AMUs. What is the mass of a single carbon atom in grams? So the periodic table part here, what they're doing is, is they're looking at the periodic table and they're looking at that average atomic mass for carbon. That's where this number 12.011 um, AMUs came from. So we know that we have a mass of 12.011 AMUs per one carbon. Now, part of this math is we want to um, treat our units, AMUs, like their algebraic letters. And so we want to set things up so that those units cross out. So AMUs has to go on the bottom. And I'm gonna, I know myself better here. I need to make this a little longer. Okay, so AMUs have to go in on the bottom or in the denominator because they're in the top here. I have to have them in the bottom here, okay?
So AMUs goes on the bottom, and then I'm going to look back at that conversion factor here. AMUs, the other unit in this conversion factor, is grams. So my other unit here is going to be grams. And now I have to put the right numbers in. I'm really going to end up using this one here. Okay, so I'm going to put that 1.6611. Times 10 to the negative 24th in the numerator and 1 AMU on the bottom. So my units, AMUs, cross out. I'm going to be left with units of grams per carbon atom. Okay. Now, mathematically, this is where you need to have a calculator and you need to be able to put scientific notation into your calculator. Mathematically, I'm going to take 12.011 AMUs and multiply that by 1.6611 times 10 to the negative 24th grams. If you do that correctly, you should get 1.9951 times 10 to the negative 23rd grams per carbon atom because this was one carbon atom here okay now a quick little aside about putting this information in your calculator if you have a TI-30X okay like the ones I had in my room you're going to type this in your calculator as 12.011 times 1.6611 and there's a little button it's ee -E. it is the um oh <laughs> it's the second button or it's the kind of the second part of the x to the negative one that's the button you want to push when you type it on your calculator it's going to give you a little e and then negative 24 so what this does is by using this E, it replaces your need to type times 10 and caret, which some of you might have been doing. The other problem, if you type in the times 10 caret, then you have to have that number in parentheses. When you use this little E button, you don't have to use parentheses anymore. So if you type this in your calculator, Okay, the way that I have asked you to here, you should get the correct answer. Okay, so um, again, if that's a struggle for you, here you go. And if that is a struggle with you, if you contact me by email, we can set up a little Zoom or something and I can try to help you with your calculator. Okay, um, if you're using, if you've got a, an app for your phone to make it a scientific calculator, you may be on your own because um, you may not know. Um, I might not be able to help you with that. So hopefully that worked for you putting it in your calculator. So now we're going to use this answer to answer our next question, okay? This answer right here, okay? So Moving on to our next question. Question seven, how many carbon atoms does it take to equal 12.011 grams? So this is saying, asking me to start with my 12.011 grams. Now, that number wasn't just chosen randomly, right? That's that same number from our periodic table, but now we're talking about it in the unit of grams. And it's asking us to figure out how many atoms that is. So I'm going to have to put grams on the bottom. And this answer here, notice what my units were, right? Grams per carbon atom. So I'm going to use this information. So my other unit here is going to be carbon atom. And it was one carbon atom. And my answer was that 1.0. 9951 times 10 to the negative 23rd. So again, my grams are canceling out. I'm going to be left with an answer in carbon atoms. So again, 
Um, you're going to put this in your calculator. You, if you do this correctly, should end up with an answer of about 6.0201 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. Car and we'll kind of say more specifically, we'll say carbon atoms. Now again, I'm going to kind of quickly in green here talk about how to put this in your calculator. Right now, this time because my number here is in the denominator, I'm dividing by that number. So when I put this in my calculator, I'm going to type it as 12.011 divided by 1.9951 times, or not times, sorry, E negative 23. When you type that in your calculator, it should give you the correct answer. Okay, so the challenge with chapter 7 and chapter 9 is going to be, I need you to figure out Okay, that <clears throat> you um, how to use your calculator uh, because I'm not going to be able to be there to help you. Like I said, if that's something you need some help with, contact me by email. We can see if we can try to do a Zoom meeting or a Google Meet and see if we can figure out a way to kind of that I can help you. Um, might even be able to do it over our phone with FaceTime or something like that, okay? So I, I'm willing to help you, but I do need you to kind of try to figure this out also on your own, okay, using your calculator. So that's question number seven. So we're going to kind of do the same set of procedures here for question eight and nine. According to the periodic table, a single phosphorus atom has a mass of 30.973 AMUs. Again, that's our number from our periodic table in AMUs for phosphorus. What is the mass of a single phosphorus atom in grams? So again, we're starting with this idea that we have that 30.973 AMUs per phosphorus atom. AMUs have to go on the bottom. I want to convert it, right? It's asking me for the mass, okay, in grams. So I need grams on the top. And again, I'm going back to this conversion factor that we first talked about here, okay, that's at the top of your page. So this is going to be 1.66, look, 1.66. One point six six one one times ten to the negative twenty fourth grams is one AMU. Again, I'm setting this up so my AMUs are sort of like algebraic letters; they're canceling out. So that's going to leave me with units of grams per phosphorus atom. Again, if you put this in your calculator correctly, you should get an answer of five point. 1449 times 10 to the negative 23rd grams per phosphorus atom. Again, I'm going to show you in green how you might type that in your calculator. This time again, I know I'm multiplying these numbers because they're both in the numerator. So I'm going to type that in my calculator. 30.973 times 1.6611 E negative 24. And if you do that properly, you should get the answer that I have here. So when you have done that, then we're going to answer question number nine. And again, just like in question number seven, we used our answer from six. We're going to use this answer right here to answer our question for number nine. Number nine asks, how many phosphorus atoms does it take to equal 9.73 grams? So again, that's that number from the periodic table. But in grams this time, oops, I don't know where I got 90 from. Oops, undo. There you go. Um, 30.973 grams. Grams on the bottom. Atom on the top. Specifically, we're talking about a phosphorus atom. 
Okay, and that number is 1 because we don't have anything in our bottom. It's per phosphorus atom. And then our number here is that 5.1449 times 10 to the negative 23rd. Again, I want my grams to cancel out. So I'm left with units of phosphorus atoms. If you do that correctly on your calculator, you should get 6.0201 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. Again, please don't take my word for it. Please make sure that you're able to actually put it in your calculator and get it to work. Again, what might this look like when it's typed in my calculator? Again, this time I know I'm dividing because my um, 5.1449 is in my denominator. So on my calculator, I'm going to type this as 30.973 divided by 5.1449 E negative 23. And when you do that, you should get this answer. Again, you can pause the YouTube if you need a little bit more time to um, do that calculation. Number 10 asks you to compare your answer to questions 7 and 9, right? So for number 9, we got 6.0201 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of phosphorus. For number 7, when we go back and look, we got 1 point, or 6.0201 times 10 to the 23rd. atoms of carbon. That is not a quinky dink. Okay? That is on purpose. And again, notice, remember, we did the same things here. Okay? We did the same steps. In questions 6 and 8, both, we took our mass right? This is our mass from our periodic table. We said that was a single phosphorus atom. We used the number they told us was how many grams and an AMU, okay? And we figured out the mass of each of, the, of a single atom of phosphorus or carbon, okay? Then we took that same mass that's on our periodic table, but now we expressed it in grams, we use those masses we had figured out to figure out how many atoms we would have. Again, this is not a quinky dink. This is saying here, right? This is saying that when I take that number from my periodic table and express it in grams, we have always the same number of atoms. What's that number? This 6.0201 times 10 to the 23rd. Okay, we proved it with phosphorus right here. We did the same thing with carbon right here. You could do this over and over and over again on your periodic table. Every single time you do those two steps that we just did, you would end up with 6.0201 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. So what I'm saying is if I take my average atomic mass from my periodic table and I express it in the units of grams, then I'm going to have the same number of atoms of that element every single time. That special number I'm going to have is 6.0201 times 10 to the 23rd. What we're going to see in a moment here is, remember, in the introduction to this ChemQuest, they told you that we have certain numbers that are special. A dozen always means you have 12. A baker's dozen means you have 13. If you have a pair, you have two. Well, a mole is going to be 6.0201 times 10 to the 23rd it's going to have that special number associated with it. 
So if we look at the information, what is a mole? Hopefully you found that your answers to questions 7 and 9 were about the same. Both answers should be about 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. The quantity, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, is Avogadro's constant, and we call it the mole. Just like the quantity 12 is called a dozen, so the quantity 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd is called a mole. By definition, a mole is the quantity of atoms necessary to equal the element's atomic mass in grams. So, according to the periodic table, one atom of, carb of sodium has an atomic mass of about 22.99 AMUs. If you weighed out 22.998 grams on a balance, you would have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of sodium present. Look at your periodic table and find gold, atomic number 79. What is the mass of one gold atom? You should note that one gold atom has a mass of 196.97 AMUs. How many gold atoms would you need to get 196.97 grams? You would need to put 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of gold on the balance before you would get 196.97 grams of gold. One mole of an atom will always equal the atom's atomic mass in grams. So think about that, digest that for a moment, pause the YouTube video if you need to. Question number 11. What is the mass of one atom of aluminum include units? So we're going to look at aluminum on our periodic table. We're going to look at its mass, which on the periodic table that I'm looking at is 26.982 Now, the key here, right, and they're asking you to include units because they want you thinking about this. I'm asking about the mass of one atom. The mass of one atom is always the number of the average atomic mass from the periodic table expressed in AMUs. Number 12. If you had 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of aluminum, what mass of aluminum would you have include units? So now remember, this is that special number. That's one mole. That's what we just talked about. Okay? And one mole of an atom will always equal the atom's atomic mass in grams. That's the last sentence of that information section we just read. One more time. One mole of an atom will always equal the atom's atomic mass in grams. So because this is one mole, this is going to be 26.982 okay, grams because it's 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms which is one mole. So because we this specifically asked about this special number, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms, which happens to be one mole, then it's the mass of my element on my periodic table expressed in grams. Question 13. What is then atomic mass? Okay, atomic mass. It is the mass of a single atom usually measured in units of 
atomic mass units. Okay, or AMUs. And it's the mass of a single atom. Okay. Question 14. If you had one mole of pennies, how many pennies would you have, right? So one mole of anything is the special number 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. So if I have a mole of pennies, I'm going to have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd pennies. Really no math required to figure that out. Just that idea that a mole always equals 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. 15. If you had three moles of sand, how many grains of sand would you have? So I have three moles of sand. I know that one mole of sand is going to mean that I'm going to have, again, that special number, that Avogadro's constant, grains. Again, moles of sand are canceling out, like algebraic letters. And so I'm going to end up with an answer of 1.81 times 10 to the 24th grains. Okay. Again, putting that in my calculator. Okay, I'm going to do 3 times 6.02e23 to get that answer. All right, so we have another information section, molecular mass, also known as formula mass, and molar mass. Just as atomic mass is the mass of an atom, molecular mass is the mass of a molecule. It is found by adding up all of the masses of the atoms in the molecule. Because ionic compounds are not properly called molecules, the term formula mass is used in place of molecular mass for ionic compounds. Consider the following examples. Number one, the atomic mass of hydrogen, 1.0 AMUs, and the atomic mass of oxygen is 16.0 AMUs. One molecule of water, H2O, has a molecular mass of 18.0 AMUs. This number is obtained by adding the masses of two hydrogens, each at 1.0 AMUs, and the mass of one oxygen, 16.0 AMUs. Two, Aluminum, aluminum chloride, AlCl3, has a formula mass of about 133.5 AMUs. This is found by adding the mass of one aluminum atom of 27.0 AMUs to the mass of three chlorine atoms, three times 35.5 AMUs. Verify this on your calculator. Just as one mole of atoms equals the atomic mass of an atom in grams, so also, one mole of molecules equals the molar mass of the molecule in grams. Molar mass is the mass in grams per mole of one mole of substance. Therefore, we expect that 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of water will have a mass of 18.0 grams and 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd formula units of aluminum chloride will have a mass of 133.5 grams. We say, then, that the molar mass of water is 18.0 grams per mole, and the molar mass of aluminum chloride is 133.5 grams per mole. Grams per mole is read grams per mole, where mole is the abbreviation for mole. 16. Verify using a periodic table and calculator that the molecular mass of N2O5 is approximately 108 AMUs. Okay, so this is not something typically you have to show work for, but again, when you're new at this and to kind of help you see where this is coming from. So we have two elements in this compound. We have nitrogen and we have oxygen. And from our subscripts, we know we have two nitrogens and we have five oxygens. 
So now I'm going to look at the mass of nitrogen on my periodic table, which is 14.007, and my mass of oxygen on my periodic table, which is 15.999. I don't care if you want to round them. I'm just going to use the whole numbers, okay, that the calculate or that the periodic table gives me. Right, and 2 times 14.007 is 28.014. 5 times 15.999 is 79.995. Now, to figure out the molecular mass of this whole compound, I have to add these two numbers together. So I get a mass of 108. 0.009. Now the question is right about units. Okay, and it's asking me about the molecular mass. So because it's asking about molecular mass, we're talking about the mass of a single molecule. So this is going to be in units of AMUs. Number seventeen. How many molecules of N2O5 are required to equal 108 grams? Right, so it's saying 108 grams. Now notice, that's the same as this number right here. But what's changed? AMUs have become grams. Anything to take AMUs and make it grams and it's the same number both times, that means we're dealing with that special number, one mole, which means, I don't have to do math for this, I know it's going to be 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules that I need. Again, the person who wrote your um, ChemQuest said, since 108 AMUs is the molecular mass, it will take 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules to equal 108 grams. Number 18. Why is the term molecular mass applied to water, but the term formula mass applied to aluminum, aluminum chloride? Okay. Water is a molecular compound because it's made of two nonmetals. Therefore, the appropriate term to call it is a molecule, and its mass is called its molecular mass. Okay, aluminum chloride is an ionic compound because it's made of a metal and a nonmetal. Therefore, remember the correct term for it is a formula unit. And because it's a formula unit and an ionic compound, we call it a formula mass. So question number 19 asks us to find the molecular or formula mass for each of the following include units. So letter A, magnesium phosphide. Okay. Um, magnesium phosphide. The first thing that we need then is a chemical formula. So our question is, is this ionic or molecular? It's an ionic compound because it's a metal and a nonmetal. So I have to do symbols, charges, crisscross, lowest whole number ratio. Now I know that I have three magnesiums and two phosphoruses. Okay. Um, magnesium's mass is 24.305, okay, AMUs, and phosphorus's mass is 30.974 AMUs, okay, so 3 times the 24, and again, this is not um, work that you would normally have to show, okay? I'm just showing it so that you can see um, how we get these numbers, where they come from, okay? And then 2 times the 30, okay? 61. 
and then I'm going to add those together. Okay. And again, this is asking for a uh, mass. Now, this is going to be, remember, a formula mass because this is an ionic compound. But because it's a formula mass, it's going to be AMUs. Okay? Letter B, sodium sulfate. Again, this is an ionic compound, so symbols, charges, Crisscross, lowest whole number ratio, I have two sodiums, I have one sulfur, I have four oxygens, okay? Um, again, sodium's mass is 22.990, sulfur is 32.065, oxygen is the 15.999. All right, so 2 times 22.99 is 45.98. This is going to just be my 32.065. 4 times my 15.999. I'm going to add these all together. So that gives me 142.041, and again, this is going to be AMUs, and again, this is going to be a formula mass because this is an ionic compound. Okay. Letter C, calcium nitrate. So I have calcium, nitrogen, and oxygen. I have one calcium. I have two nitrogens. I have six oxygens. Nitrogen is 14.007 from my periodic table. Calcium is 40.078. I'm going to add all of those together. Sorry, that's making a lot of noise. 164.086. Again, this is AMUs. And this is going to be a formula mass again because this is an ionic compound. Okay. Letter D. Um, again, they've given me the formula, so I have carbon and hydrogen. I have four carbons. I have eight hydrogens. Carbon is not 15, but 12.011. Hydrogen is 1.0079. Again, those are my numbers coming from my periodic table. Okay, so I have 48.044. I add these two numbers together, I get 56.1072 AMUs. Now, this one is an I, or a molecular compound, so this is a molecular mass. All right, question number 20. Find the molar mass of each of the following include units. So the difference here now is we're talking about molar mass. Remember, our units for molar mass are always going to be grams per mole. We do it the same way. We're just dealing with these numbers as grams instead of in AMUs. So I still have one calcium. I have two chlorines. Calcium is 40 0.078 from my periodic table and chlorine is the 35.453 okay 2 times 35.453 so we have 70.906 I'm going to add these two numbers together and I get 110.984 now the difference being, because we're asking about molar mass, my units are grams per mole. OK? 
Okay, so this means that if I had 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, okay, um, formula units, because it's an ionic compound, of calcium chloride, okay, I would have a mass then of 110.984 grams because I have that special one mole. Letter B, barium nitrate. Okay. Um, again, this is an ionic compound. This time you don't have your formula, so you need that. So it's barium positive 2, nitrate negative 1, crisscross parentheses 2. I have barium, I have one of them. Nitrogen, I have 2. Oxygen, I have 6. Okay. Um, barium has a mass of, where'd you go, barium? 137. 0.33, this is 14.007, this is 15.999. Again, this isn't work that you'll have to show. Again, I'm doing it so that you can see where these numbers come from. Okay. I'm going to add them all together. Okay. and I get 261.338. Again, because it asked me about molar mass, this is automatically grams per mole, which again means that if I have 6.022 time, times 10 to the 23rd formula units of barium nitrate, I am going to have, okay, um, 261.338 grams of barium nitrate. Question 21, what is the difference between the terms molecular mass and molar mass? Okay, um, so again, I'm not going to write this one because you can copy it from your um, key that I provided, but the difference between molecular mass and molar mass, right? Molecular mass, here I'm talking about one molecule, Molar mass, remember I'm talking about one mole of molecules, which is that 6 times 10 to the 23rd molecules, or one mole. Okay, so molecular refers to the mass of a single molecule, but molar refers to the mass of a mole of something, or the mass of 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms or molecules. Information, beginning mole conversions. The mole, often abbreviated as MOL, is the link okay, um, between the microscopic atoms and molecules and the macroscopic things measured in grams. If you know how many grams of a substance you have and you know the molar mass, you can find out how many molecules you have. Two examples of how to do this. Using a method similar to converting units is shown below. Please, you need to take a look at those because, again, I'm pretty particular about the fact that you show your work properly. Okay, so look at those two examples there. And we're going to go to number 22. Using your calculator, verify that if you have 125 grams of gold, you have about 6.82 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of gold. Show your calculations below. Okay, so... We're going to start with our 125 atoms, or sorry, not atoms, gave us grams of gold. Grams have to go on the bottom. Grams have to go on the bottom of gold. And we have to convert that to moles of gold to get to atoms. So we know that one mole is going to be my mass from my periodic table for gold, which on my periodic table is 196.97. Again, my grams of gold have crossed out, so I'm left with moles of gold, but that's not what I want. I want atoms. So moles of gold go on the bottom. Atoms of gold go on the top.
And I know that one mole of gold has 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. So if you put that in your calculator correctly, you're going to get the answer that they talk about here on the sheet, the 6.8 or 3.82 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of gold. Again, I'm going to show you how you would do that on your calculator. Again, notice here I have a number I have to divide by and a number I have to multiply by. Order of multiplication division doesn't have it doesn't matter. So it doesn't matter how you put this into your calculator. 125, you can do divide by 196.97 and then multiply that by 6.02 times not times, sorry. E 2, 3 when you put it in your calculator. When you do that, you should get the correct answer. Again, if you need to pause the YouTube to do that math, that's fine. I want to keep going. Question number 23. Consider 210 grams of N2O5. How many molecules is this? So this is asking me to take 210 grams of N2O5 and figure out how many molecules of N2O5 I have. Okay, so I'm going to start with my 210 grams of N2O5. I can convert grams to moles using my molar mass, which says that one mole is always going to be my mass for my periodic table. So again, just kind of a reminder, I'm not going to show all the work, but I'm going to do nitrogen 2 times its mass, oxygen 5 times its mass on the periodic table. You should get about 108 grams for that mass when you do it. Okay, like again, that's doing um, like these problems right here. Okay, the same as doing these problems right here. Okay. Now, though, if I look at my units, right, I my grams cancel out, but I still have moles. So moles have to go on the bottom. Molecules on the top. One mole is the 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules. Okay, so again, when you do that, you should get about 1.17 times 10 to the 24th molecules of N2O5. Again, I'm going to show you in green how to type that in your calculator. Again, order doesn't matter. Okay, you type that in your calculator, you should get the correct answer. Question 24. If you exhale 7.25 times 10 to the 24th molecules of carbon dioxide, how many moles of carbon dioxide do you exhale? Hint, use the conversion factor that one mole equals 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules. Okay, so here is that work. This is basically asking me, and I like to do this because it helps me focus. Um, sometimes these problems are kind of long story problems. And we want to know how many molecules, how many moles of CO2 that is. So I start with my 7 point, I always start with my given, 7.25 times 10 to the 24th molecules CO2. Okay. Molecules CO2 to moles of CO2. Again, one mole is always going to be that special number of Avogadro's constant. Okay. And when you do that, you should end up with about 12.04 moles of CO2. Again, here is how you might put that in your calculator. We're dividing this time because um, our numbers in the numerator and denominator Okay, so that's how you should put that in your calculator for that one. Question B asks, how many grams of carbon dioxide do you exhale? Now, 
I suggest, because sometimes you make a calculation error, that you always go back and always start with the problem they gave you, or the number they gave you in the problem. So that's this. And it's asking me how many grams of CO2 that is. Again, that means that I'm going to really kind of start my problem the same way I already did my problem. Okay, I'm going to start with my molecules of CO2. I'm going to take my Avogadro's number and convert it to moles, which is 1. Okay, and so my units are crossing out. And now I'm going to use molar mass of carbon dioxide with moles on the bottom because it's in the numerator to grams, one mole, and again I'm going to use carbon and two oxygens, and when you do that math you should get that 44. That's that math where you don't have to necessarily show your work, so I added one carbon at 12 plus two oxygens at about 16 each to get that 44 grams. When you do that you should get about 529.9 grams of CO2. Again, What's that going to look like when you put it in your calculator? 7.25 E24 divided by 6.02 E23 times 44 should give you your answer. All right, our last question. In a bag full of pennies, you may have 2.15 moles of copper. How many grams do you have? So this problem, again, has asked me to take the 2.15 moles of copper and figure out how many grams of copper I have. So 2.15 moles of copper. Moles of copper on the bottom. I can use my molar mass of copper to figure out how many grams that is. Um, again, that's going to be my number from my periodic table for copper, which is 63.546. Okay. Um, and you should end up with about 136.6 grams of copper. Again, on your calculator, um, this time I'm multiplying because these are both in the numerator, so I'm just going to do this on my calculator to get my answer. So I'm sorry, I realized this was a long chem quest, about an hour long here, um, but it was designed to help you in case you need some help with these problems and kind of introducing you to how in our notes that we take in Chapter 7, you'll be required to set up your problems. Have a good day. Talk to you later.